You know, like ready for this event tonight, I uh, read a lot of Mark Twain. I'd actually read it. I listened to audio tapes as read by Kourtney Kardashian. It was very, very close to that. <laughs> See, I always liked the way Mark Twain looked. You know, the shock of white hair, the handsome chiseled features. Because <laughs> if he looked like that today, he'd probably be replaced by a younger, more talented Jimmy Twain. Yeah. <laughs> but that's... I, it's just the way. You know, I'm really proud of uh, Jimmy and Seth. They've done a wonderful job on their respective shows, keeping them number one. See the, see, the truth is, my time was done. See, I was fortunate. When I left The Tonight Show, I didn't leave dead broke like Bill and Hillary. I was able to save some. <laughs> I was able to save some. See, you have to know when it's time to move on, especially when we're getting old in a young business. See, everybody at The Tonight Show is like 22 to 45. I was like the oldest one there. And when you work with young people, you think you're inspiring them, but you realize they're really just laughing at you. you know. <laughs> because you can't be hip past a certain age. You have old guy gestures that will give you away. I did this myself. We had a meeting with our staff. At the end of the meeting, I said, listen, um, I gave you guys a call over the weekend. What is it, Mr. Lano? A sparkler? What do you mean give you a call over the weekend, you know? I should have just gone like this. I'll get on the horn. <laughs> Last year, we got these six interns, these six young women, 18 to 21, from Ithaca College. You know, nice girls. So one of them stops me in the hall one day. She goes, excuse me, Mr. Lano, do you have the time? I go, yes, Suzanne, sure. It's about, uh, it's about half past two. She goes, ah, oh, thanks, I guess. I go, is something wrong? She goes, I'm sorry. What time is it? I said, it's half past two. You know, 2.30. Oh, 2.30, okay. What's half past two? No, it's not an Indian word, half past two. <laughs> I said, it's half past two. Haven't you heard that like a half past four? No, I never heard it. You never heard half past four? See, now I'm the crazy old man of The Tonight Show. <laughs> I have my own language. It's hippie two, it's hippie foo. <laughs> See, I don't mind being 64. I don't mind looking 64, but something unfair happened. And I mention this because it happened 25 years ago this month. 25 years ago this month, I was th 39 years old. I was hosting The Tonight Show every Monday night. Preceding Friday, I'm riding my motorcycle, admittedly too fast. I'm on a windy road called Mulholland Drive. I'm going 85, 90, 95, I'm pushing the bike a little bit. I come to the corner, hit some sand, Bike slides off money, hits a tree, bikes are destroyed, slide along the pavement, my, leg, my legs all cut up, Woo! ambulance takes me away. Saturday, get out of the hospital bed, try to walk, ah, I, I can't get out of the hospital, it's too painful, can't walk. Sunday, Sunday, I walk a little bit. Monday, I walk out on stage like nothing happened. 39 years old, three days after a 100 mile an hour motorcycle crash, I am back on stage like that. Last Thursday, <laughs> I'm sitting on my couch. <laughs> I yawn <laughs> and turn my head at the same time. <laughs> To think I could pull off a maneuver like that in a lazy boy chair at my age, yawning and turning my head, what a fool! <laughs> you know, there's been an awful lot of talk lately about comedians and their backgrounds, and I always hear about comedians having these horrible childhoods with terrible parents. I had the most wonderful parents in the world. My parents, inadvertently, were the funniest people I ever met. My mother came to this country when she was 11 years old from Scotland by herself, very quiet, very meek. My mother would always say, whatever you do, don't make yourself the center of attention. That's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> and as you can see, that works out well. She met my dad and a tough Italian kid who was a prize fighter. My dad was a prize fighter when I became an insurance salesman. And this is how you get into comedy, okay? My dad worked for financial insurance and he was a manager and once a month he would bring home either a new salesman or the top salesman for the month for a good home cooked meal because my mom was such a good cook, you know. So my dad comes home one day, he goes, look, tomorrow night I'm bringing home this new guy. 
He's six foot four, but he's got a wooden leg from the knee down. So he says to my mother, whatever you do, don't look at his leg, don't stare at his leg, don't say anything about his leg. Do you understand? <laughs> my mother, are you understand? Don't look at his leg, don't, don't say anything about it. Just, just always look up. Don't look at his leg, don't say anything. You know? So the next night, my father comes down and says, everybody here, this is Bruce. And my father, hello. And my mother's like, she's got a broken neck. You know, she's looking at the guy, hello. And my mother's trying, don't look at his neck, don't, don't say anything, don't even look at his neck. <laughs> my mother is frightened to death, and just looking at his She won't even look down, and she's, she's putting the food down like this, you know, and the guy, so, <laughs> she's just all tense, you know, my father, <laughs> so my father gets all the food down, you know. My mother sits down, now fine, she can sit down, she doesn't have to look at his leg, so she's looking him in the eye. And this guy says, Mrs. Leno, this is the best Italian meal I've ever had. And my mother, being from Scotland, where they have these rather odd sayings, says, will you eat like a man with a hollow leg? Oh, for God's sake, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> my mother locks herself in the bathroom. She's crying. My dad's yelling. When you're nine, this is the greatest thing in the world. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's more fun than that? Over the years, I was in a couple of movies. As many of my good friends pointed out, I was, not a, I was not a very good actor. I did have one acting role that is still my favorite, playing tricks on my dad. My dad, Italian guy, my dad had that Italian temper, you know, and I knew how to get my dad's go. So one day I call home, and my mother was the worst liar in the world. I go, hi, Ma, how you doing? Well, good. What? Everything all right? Ma, what? Oh, yeah, everything's fine. You sound like some, oh, nothing's wrong. I said, well, let me talk to daddy. Well, you're not here. We're not here. What do we not here? What is daddy? Well, so finally I find out my dad was working on the roof, fell off the roof, hurt his shoulder. He's in the hospital. I said, look, man, I'm going to fly home. No, no, I'll fly home right now. So I grabbed the midnight flight. And I landed at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, the hospital is midway between Logan Airport and our house in Andover. So I figure I'll go right to the hospital. So I get to the hospital at 8 o'clock. And I go up to the, one of the nurses there. Hi, I'm Jay Leno, the guy in the tent. Oh, hi, Jay. I said, my dad said, could I have a doctor's outfit? So I put on the thing and the mask and the hat. And, the, and I get the clipboard, you know, and I go in my father's room, you know. I go, you uh, Angelo Leno? Angelo Leno? My father goes, no, it's Leno. Leno? What's that? Italian? <laughs> my father goes, yeah, it's Italian. And I go, my dad goes, let me tell you something. I don't like your attitude, fella. <laughs> and I still have my back turned. I say, well, we got a lot of Italian guys like you in here. He goes, what? What does that mean? You know, old guys never worked a day in their life looking for a hot meal on the free bed. Damn it, he jumps out the bed. He pops me and goes, Dad, don't hit me in the face. Don't hit me in the face. <laughs> that was my greatest acting role ever. <laughs> You know, a few years ago, I had Drew Barrymore on the show. And she knew I'd been married a long time. And she said, what's the secret to being married? What's the secret to a successful marriage? And I said to her, marry your conscience. Marry the person you wish you could be. And that's what I did when I married my wife, Mavis. Oh, I got to tell you. You know, she, my wife, my wife and her fight for human rights for women all around the world has been an inspiration to me and to millions of other women as well. I could not be prouder of her. Most people hear the good show. She had to hear all the stupid ones that didn't work. Those middle of the night jokes, oh man, you know. Marry your conscience, that's what I did. I am so glad she didn't do that, or she'd be married to Mahatma Gandhi right now. But, uh, uh. but ladies and gentlemen, I wanna, again, thank you for this beautiful, Statue, I, I will treasure this. This is, you know, this is kind of a cool award because there's so many of the awards in Hollywood where you kind of campaign for something or your press agent sees if you can get you. This is one of these things, you just get a call one day and they go, oh, you got this. So this means a tremendous amount to me. I'm terribly touched by all this. And I, 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 I couldn't be more touched by all my friends, Garth and Jerry and everybody. It was just, thank you for the most wonderful night of my life. Thanks everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you.